XDG desktop portals are something I talk about quite often and while not initially made for this, especially in the context of Wayland. But what even is a desktop portal and why do they exist? Well, to put it most simply, they are used for exposing resources that otherwise wouldn't be accessible and done so in a consistent fashion. That'll make a bit more sense as we go throughout the video. These resources are exposed through something known as DBUS, a desktop bus interface. DBUS is a messaging middleware that allows multiple processors to communicate with each other. Now you don't necessarily need DBUS to make this happen. You could do something like this, have all of these processors communicate with each other directly. But this creates a pretty serious problem. How do you standardize the way this communication happens? Let's say, for example, GNOME is doing one thing. KDE is probably not going to do the same thing. Cosmic's probably going to do something different. And all of these other desktops are going to do different things, let alone the applications that aren't a part of a desktop that do something completely different. Well, what you can do is have a consistent interface that applications interact with. So in this case, let's say you want to add a process F. It doesn't have to be concerned with the specifics of process A, B, or C, all it needs to understand is how to interact with this bus, whether it's taking data out of the bus or putting data into the bus. And this sort of interaction between processes that may have been developed by completely different people with completely different ideas is what DBUS was created to standardize. And each of these desktop portals is known as a DBUS interface. Now, you may recall from an older video why they're called XDG desktop portals and not just desktop portals, but if not, I'll give you a bit of a recap. So XDG stands for X Desktop Group. This is a group that used to develop a lot of standardized software for the Linux desktop. Nowadays, they don't really exist, or at least exist in the same fashion, because nowadays they are called freedesktop.org, but you'll still see a lot of applications with XDG in their name, or a lot of standards that use XDG. And the name at this point is sort of just to indicate that it's part of this group of software. Even though X Desktop Group no longer really exists, it makes sense to just keep the naming convention going. Now, considering the project is developed under the free desktop banner, what other free desktop project would it make sense to be able to expose these resources in a consistent fashion? The answer to that is a flat pack. Flat packs are one of the containerized sandbox desktop application standards we now see on the Linux desktop, in the same space as things like snap packages. Now, the containerized aspect doesn't really matter here. The important part is the sandbox. A sandbox is basically a lockdown environment for an application to run in. Only certain things can go out and only certain things can come in. And for simple applications like say a calculator for example, you don't load any data, it's just a very, very simple calculator. It has zero issues operating inside of a sandbox. But what if you want to do something a little bit more complex? Let's say you need um, camera access like OBS. Maybe you want to have a file chooser. Maybe you want to have location information for a mapping software. Or maybe you want to access desktop notifications. Well, these resources may be locked out of the sandbox. And that's just a very very short list of examples. There are tons of other things that wouldn't be available in the sandbox, but this is exactly where desktop portals become incredibly useful. There are portals for all manner of things like camera access, device access, sending emails, a file chooser, accessing the game mode application, location information, memory monitoring, printing, uh, trashing, screencasting, screenshotting, remote desktop, and a ton of other things. And not all of these even seem instantly useful, but all of these are here because some application or some developer felt like this portal was going to be incredibly useful. Now you could just say, well, why do you have a sandbox in the first place if you just run it without the sandbox? This problem doesn't exist, an application can just run as you'd expect. And 
that's totally fair. You don't have to run everything inside of a sandbox, but applications are going to be. And if you're going to have sandboxes, you need some sort of system to allow resources into the sandbox in a controlled fashion. And then when you don't want it in there, you can reject it when desired. Portals offer exactly this. It basically operates like a permission system, much like you would have on Android or iOS. Now being developed under the free desktop banner, it was initially developed with flat packs in mind. However, also being developed under that banner, it was developed as an open desktop standard and was never intended to be locked down just to flat packs. Now there are some minor portals that are made specifically for flat packs, like the flat pack portal and the flat pack update monitor but everything else is going to work in plenty of other systems. And many of the similar issues that exist with flat packs also exist with things like snaps, for example. While they do work internally very differently, they are both sandboxed and both want to be able to access resources that are outside of the sandbox. And Snapcraft even provides a little bit of documentation on how to use portals in your Snap. It's not that long of a read, so feel free to go and do so yourself. It seems pretty easy to set up though. Now, so far, I've pretty much just been talking about sandboxes, but that's not the only reason that desktop portals exist. Also, the XDG Desktop Portal project is broken down into two components. This is the XDG Desktop Portal repo. This basically is the front end for the applications and for flat packs and things you want to develop that interact with the portals. But this says nothing about how it should operate on KDE or how it should operate on GNOME. Let's say, for example, with the file chooser, what file chooser should be used? Well, this doesn't specify that. And that is done on the desktop portal for the desktop, I guess. This is the one for GNOME, there's one for KDE, there's a bunch of other ones like one for elementary, one for WROOT, LXQT, a plain GTK one, there's going to be one for Cosmic when that comes out as well, and there's probably a bunch of others for random little desktops. I know there's one for Hyperland, for example. Basically what these do is define the specifics of how the portal should operate on that desktop. So Mudder is going to be doing things very differently than things are happening on KDE. Even just the fact that they use different GUI frameworks. So for the file chooser, for example, you're going to want to have the GTK file chooser on GNOME, but you don't want that on KDE. It's going to just stand out like a sore thumb. You want to be using the KDE file chooser and the same on basically any other desktop and any other thing you might want to have specific to that desktop. And this is one of the reasons why portals can be useful outside of a sandbox. Let's say you have an application that chooses to use the file chooser portal. No longer are you stuck with whatever file chooser they choose to use. Now it can integrate nicely into your desktop. And the specifics of these desktop desktop portals are entirely up to that individual project. For example, with something like the WL Roots portal, this isn't actually a full portal. It only integrates a couple of things like screencasting and a couple of other little portals. Whereas the GNOME portal or the KDE portal, they're probably going to integrate most, if not all of the existing portals because they are a full desktop environment. Whereas WL Roots can't really say exactly what is going to be built on top of it. So it can't really go and do everything. Now, obviously, because Wayland desktops exist, these desktop desktop portals are going to run on the Wayland side as well. But why are portals now being used to also address Wayland issues? It's not like Wayland is a sandbox or anything like that, and it is a regular desktop, but why is it being used for things like screencasting, for example? Well, if you think about it, the Wayland security model, especially where things are missing, sort of operates in the same fashion as a sandbox. So if you have a sandbox that locks down screen recording, for example, that's basically the same thing as Wayland not having a screen recording API. And the exact same is true for global shortcuts as well. On X11, any application can just grab the keyboard when anything else is in focus. On Wayland, 
that API doesn't exist. An application can only grab the keys when it is currently in focus. But this doesn't mean there aren't resources on your system to make this happen in another way. But just letting you have an API to grab these things doesn't make sense in the Wayland security model. But what does make more sense is a system where you have permission to access it and then deny permission when you no longer want that application to be able to do that thing. This is exactly what desktop portals do. So now we have a global shortcuts portal and also a screencasting portal. Now, I would have much preferred if something like this was just built into Wayland from the start, or maybe it worked more like X11, where you could just grab any keyboard you wanted to grab, grab the screen you wanted to grab, but that was never going to happen. And portals allowed this to happen, even though the Wayland developers were never going to add this natively into the core spec. Now, some individual desktops did have their own specific desktop way of doing global shortcuts or doing screen recording, but the issue here is they were desktop specific. And being desktop specific, it makes it really hard on developers to actually support things across different desktops. Now with desktop portals, you just design for the portal and you're good to go. If it doesn't work on the desktop, now it's up to the desktop to properly implement their portals. And that should give you a general overview of what desktop portals are and why they matter so much. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you use desktop portals on a daily basis? Are you using Wayland? Are you using Flatpaks? Maybe you're just using a desktop portal for file chooser integration. I would love to know. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you liked the video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, send me a pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody on Games. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.